One defining moment 10 years ago forced me to grasp the dire crisis of antibiotic resistance. It jolted me into action to learn as much as I could about what we are up against. I have not shared this story with anyone before because I wanted to bury my emotional response. See, I did not see a value in dwelling upon it. I do now. Without being aware of it, these emotions were fueling my passion. And I hope that by sharing this moment with you, you too can feel inspired to take action. My story takes place during my first year clinical residency in the hospital. That's when and where I met Jonathan. I remember him quite vividly. He was 27 years old and he just got married. He was telling me all about his honeymoon in the Cayman Islands. The zip lining, the romantic dinners on the beach, something I could only dream of back then. When he got back from his honeymoon, he went skiing. And while doing one of those flips, thinking he was in the Olympics, he broke his left femur. And that's the strongest bone in the body connecting the hip to the knee. This required surgery. His operation went well, but a few days later, he woke up to severe pain in his left hip. It was completely swollen, bright red, and hot to the touch. His diagnosis? A bloodstream infection. He was placed on an initial course of antibiotics, but I had to wait a few days before receiving the final microbiology lab report back confirming which antibiotics the bacteria would even respond to. Being a young clinician at that time, I remember thinking, I got this. Simple. He's young and otherwise healthy. He is going to respond or be susceptible to any antibiotic. He is going to be just fine. Day three or four, I checked in on Jonathan during my daily rounds in the hospital. And I remember him telling me that he felt like his entire body was just deteriorating. That's around the same day that his infection spread to his brain and his lab report came back. I looked at that computer screen trying to figure out how to treat this infection, but there was the letter R for resistant written next to every single antibiotic, meaning that the bacteria would not even respond to any antibiotics. R, R, R. Where was the S for susceptible? What are we going to tell his wife? I could do nothing. Jonathan never made it to his one-year wedding anniversary. This experience fundamentally changed the course of my personal and professional life. It was a pivotal moment that led me into specializing in infectious disease research and eventually defending my thesis on the exact resistant pathogen that consumed Jonathan. Here I stand now, over 30 research papers deep, and serving as one of the U.S. ambassadors to lead this global fight against antibiotic resistance. And this is where you come in. I need your help in this fight. I am going to arm you with three action items that you can start implementing today to make an impact and to reduce the deadly effects of antibiotic resistance. But before we get to these three action items, I think it's important for you to understand some of the science behind antibiotic resistance. The story starts in the 1920s with the discovery of penicillin by Alexander Fleming. Penicillin was not distributed to the general public until the 1940s. 
It was considered the miracle drug, sold over the counter and overused. Only one year later, the first person developed penicillin resistance. And by the 1950s, this resistance was widespread. We have seen the same trend with other antibiotics. In fact, antibiotics are the only drug where every time each one of us uses it, it becomes less and less effective, not only in us, but in those that have not even been exposed to the drug. Knowing a little more about bacteria will help you understand why. Bacteria are all around us. They have been in existence for over 3.5 billion years, and it only takes them about 30 minutes to multiply. Due to random natural mutations, some bacteria are resistant to antibiotics. When exposed to antibiotics, the susceptible bacteria die, but the resistant bacteria survive. These resistant bacteria now have room to thrive and multiply and can transfer part of their DNA to other bacteria. And this is how antibiotic resistance spreads. Jonathan represents just one of the 700,000 people per year worldwide that have died due to antibiotic-resistant infections. Looking into the future, if we continue on the current trajectory, 10 million people per year will die due to these resistant infections by the year 2050. 10 million. That's one person dying every three seconds. Well, remember Alexander Fleming, the guy that invented penicillin? He predicted this very situation we are in now over 70 years ago. See, he understood because the very nature of bacteria are to mutate, antibiotic resistance was inevitable. We are now living in the aftermath of overuse. A simple cut could have you fighting for your life. Or common surgeries could start looking like Russian roulette. Are you worried yet? <laughs> I am. Well, as promised, here are the three action items that you can start implementing today. First, Stop buying meat raised with antibiotics. Almost 80%... Almost 80% of all antibiotics in the United States are not taken by people, but they are used in animals. In 2013, over 130,000 tons of antibiotics were used in animals worldwide. This number is projected to exceed 200,000 tons by the year 2030. Let me put this number in perspective for you. An elephant weighs about six tons. This number is equivalent to around 34,000 elephants. Antibiotics are primarily given to animals as growth promoters. While we may not directly take in those antibiotics, we do ingest the bacteria within those animals. So if those animals were carrying antibiotic-resistant bacteria, that would be transferred to you and the rest of the environment, including the water, the soil, and the air that we breathe. Here comes the solution part. If you are buying meat, Check the label on that package to make sure that it states either one, USDA organic, or two, raised without antibiotics, or no antibiotics administered accompanied by a USDA process verified shield. If you are dining at a restaurant or a fast food chain, check the menu to make sure that the meat is antibiotic free. If it is not stated on the menu, ask a worker at that restaurant. Second, 
use antibiotics sparingly. In just the outpatient setting alone, over 250 million courses of antibiotics are dispensed per year, and about one-third of these are inappropriate. By inappropriate, I mean that they are being used to treat viruses. Antibiotics only work against bacteria and have no effect against viruses. So the next time you are coughing, sneezing, or have a cold, do not insist on a prescription for an antibiotic. Instead, drink fluids and get plenty of rest. The next time your kid's ear hurts, do not insist on a prescription for an antibiotic without knowing what caused it. Likewise, if your doctor gives you a prescription for an antibiotic, understand why that antibiotic is being given to you. Do not be timid about asking if you feel you really need them. And the last action item is to educate yourselves. And most importantly, tell everyone around you. As Sir Francis Bacon said, knowledge itself is power. You can educate yourselves by going to websites such as the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the World Health Organization, where you can learn more about what appropriate antibiotic usage is. You can educate others by spreading the word from what you learn through these websites, by sharing Jonathan's story, by sharing this TED Talk, or by sharing your own personal story with friends, family members, co-workers, and everyone else around you. And so, I will leave you with this. I once heard a speech by political activist and Nobel Prize winner Jody Williams. In it, she said, emotion without action is irrelevant. As I was putting this talk together, all of the emotions I felt when Jonathan passed came back. The powerlessness, the helplessness, the anxiousness, the pain, the sadness. Perhaps some of you are feeling some emotions right now and are ready to translate those into action. The day that Jonathan passed, I happened to be walking past his hospital room and I caught a glimpse of his parents and his wife grabbing onto his hands as he took his last breath. This image stays with me to this day. These emotions and Jonathan's story are what continue to fuel my actions. And this is why I am standing right here in front of you today. I am asking each one of you to take action now in this crisis that we are facing. The future is a place that you get to create. If we all work together, we can have a future where antibiotics can still save lives. Thank you.